Hello guys, welcome to Texas Mospatinia Lovers. So, I haven't done one of these in a while. This will be a review of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus six months in. I got this phone back in March of this year. It's September, so almost six months. So I upgraded from the Galaxy S9. I had to turn that phone in as a trade-in, so I can't do a comparison. But this is the Galaxy S10 Plus. Um, I'll do a more in-depth uh, review doing specifications and close-up shots and all that a little bit later. But basically, it's what Samsung's been putting out for the last uh, five years, four years, since the Galaxy S6. The uh, curved edges, glass back. In the front, it's Corning Gorilla Glass 6, which is a lot better, a little harder to scratch. And in the back, it is uh, Corning Gorilla Grass Glass 5. Uh, as usual, the back is really easy to smudge up with fingerprints. Uh, some major differences in this year's model is this phone. It's a little hard to see because it's a black back. Again, I'll do some other close-ups, but... There are three cameras in the back now. Each have its own specific uh, purpose. And the front of the camera has two cameras in the front which are designed for selfies. One is a, a depth mode lens and one is your standard lens. The one thing I can say about any of these phones, the Galaxy series, is if you buy this phone, do not leave the store without a case, even though the carrier may charge you a little bit more for the case. Murphy's Law says you're going to break this phone if you walk outside without a case. You should buy a case just in case you drop it because you're going to lose a thousand dollars. But uh, I'll get into the in-depth review here in a minute. Uh, I do really love this phone. Haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I had the Galaxy S9 like I mentioned before. Uh, there is a huge performance increase over the last model. I can say this, that I think Samsung has come out finally with the perfect phone. I had had exactly no major issues with this phone at all. Never gets hot, never locks up. The battery life is extraordinary. Unless you're sitting with this thing 10 hours a day, you're going to get two days of battery life on this without charging. Uh, this phone supports wireless charging, uh, wire, uh, wired fast charging, and you could even put this phone into a mode where you could lay another device on it, top to back, and this phone will wirelessly charge another uh, wireless device. Uh, much of a slower trickle charge, but it does have that capability if you were to buy the Samsung headphones. So. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into the specifications of this device and uh, maybe show some of its modes. This isn't going to be one of those geeky 15, 20 minute reviews. I'm just going to kind of skim over what it's capable of, what are some of the uh, very useful features, things like that. So back in a minute with the specs. Hey guys, I know it's in the beginning of the video, it didn't show the rear camera set up very easy. So here's a picture to illustrate how the camera is laid out in the back of the phone. Okay, guys, digging into the specs a little bit. This phone uh, is uh, pretty amazing when it comes to its specifications. It released in March of this year. I got it pretty much when it first came out. The front screen has Gorilla Glass 6, which is very hard to scratch and is crack resistant. The back is Gorilla Glass 5. Uh, it will break, I tell you, if you do drop this phone either side, so it's good to have a good case. Uh, it is a single SIM model, which means that this one I reviewed is made basically for use in the United States. It will work other countries, but only one SIM. Uh, the display is full HD. I believe it's referred to as 2K which means it's incredible, 522 PPI. Uh, it's just incredible. I can't even put into words how beautiful the display is. It is running on Android 9.0. The 
The USA model is using a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855. It's an octa-core setup, which amazingly, if it's running some low power applications, it's only gonna use four of the eight cores. If you're gaming or doing something uh, processor intensive, it will fire all the cores. It's using Adreno 640 GPU, which means it's amazing graphics for games and things like that. Continuing with the specs here, the memory capacity is 128 gigs internal, external storage, up to one terabyte micro SD, of course. It has three cameras. The first two are 12 megapixel. The first lens is for standard pictures. The other 12 megapixels for optical zoom. The third camera, 16 megapixel ultra wide video for like partial panorama. Uh, of course, it has an LED flash. It can record all the way up into 4K mode, and it does support HDR+. The selfie camera in front is cut out into the display. One of the lenses is a 10 megapixel for regular pictures. 8 megapixel is the depth sensor. The sound is stereo, loudspeaker on either end. It does have a 3.5 millimeter jack, and I believe this is the last Samsung flagship phone that will have that jack. From this point on, you'll need an adapter for the USB-C connector as seen in the Note 10. And this is the final page of the specifications here. This phone pretty much supports all forms of communication, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, FM radio, USA and Canada only. And of course the USB-C uh, connector. It has a fingerprint sensor, using ultrasonic technology. Uh, the battery is a 4100 mAh battery, pretty much all day. It has fast battery charging, 15 watts, if you have the appropriate adapter. It has USB power delivery, fast charging for wireless charging, and it has wireless power share. If you put the phone upside down and put it into that mode, it will charge another device that supports wireless sharing. So that's it for the specifications. So guys, continuing the review here. Of course, to start the phone, if you've got fingerprint uh, identities turned on, you just place your finger on the fingerprint. If you notice the major difference this year versus the previous model phones is that the fingerprint sensor is built into the screen. It's using an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. You do have to press on it a little bit longer than you did before in the old days. But uh, if you're looking at the phone right there, you can see that they've reduced the bezels significantly since the Galaxy S9 and previous series. You can barely see the edges anymore. It's just more like a floating screen. The case is still off. Uh, this phone is on very high security. I have it set to 30 seconds timeout. So I'll have to log into it again. So you can just tap on the screen or hit any of the buttons on the side. Leave your finger on the ultrasonic sensor for a while. I'm controlling this phone with an application from my tablet. The application is called AnyDesk. It's just your standard remote control. So right now you're looking at the app drawer, uh, the notifications area. Very similar. Looks just like previous versions of Android. You got your notifications pretty much arranged the same way. You could see that any desk connection established. Uh, doesn't look like I can clear the notifications from here right now for some reason since the uh, this remote control thing is connected to it. So if you hit the home screen that should pretty much get rid of the notifications. This uh, remote control application is a little quirky. It's just taking a minute to update to my screen here. But I'm using a customized uh, drawer here, whatever you want to call it, to, con to show the phone. I'm not using Samsung's UI. I'm using Nova Launcher so I can have my icons arranged the way I want. But your icon drawer is pretty much the same. You can flip through them. Just as before, again, it's a customized interface. But I highly recommend using this application called AnyDesk if you want a remote control for any reason or give someone remote assistance. I'm pretty much mirroring the image of my phone 
on this Galaxy S5e tablet. Continuing on here, the one thing that I'm amazed on this phone is the responsiveness of it. There is no lag. If you open up an application like Netflix, other than the network lag, you're not going to get any uh, waiting or any delay like on some of the previous de uh, devices. The only lag that's happening now is on my tablet because this AnyDesk has to transmit those images through a network to get to my tablet. But that's pretty much instant loading on Netflix. I'm using here customized weather application and time called HD widgets. I think it costs like $1.99 to buy this application. I would highly recommend it. Works absolutely perfectly. That's where you see the weather and the clock. That is something that's not part of the Samsung UI. A little warm today here. So if you hit the home button, of course, it goes back like any other phone to the home screen. But in a minute here, I'm just going to get to some demonstrations of the camera. But basically, to be honest, we buy these phones for the camera. At least I do. Ever since the Galaxy Epic phone back in 2010, Samsung cameras have had a superior edge over the iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and get to some uh, demonstrations of the camera here. So guys, continuing with the review here, I'm using the remote control application again to control the camera feature on this device. So basically I'm using two tripods here. I've got it facing toward the living area. But this camera has three different modes. Usually it comes right up in the middle mode right here. As you can see, it's normal focus. It's not wide angle. It, if you click on the thing where it shows three images or three trees, have you, that will put the phone into the wide angle focus. As you can see now, you can see much more of the room. If you go back to the middle selection right there, it's normal. And then there's a telephoto mode. So it's kind of zooming up on the image there. I'll show a few example pictures at the end of this video to demonstrate how the camera works or some of the test pictures that I've taken earlier in the year. Uh, pretty simple operation here. You have your photo mode down here toward the middle. A little bit, actually a little bit more toward the bottom. You can flip between photo mode, super slow motion, slow motion video. A lot of versatile modes on this phone. Some of these modes probably well, I'll never use. But I'm going to get it back to the regular mode now. Of course, the mode that everybody uses the most is video. At least I do. And you could take some pretty amazing videos on this phone. I'm not going to go through every one of them, but this is capable of a uh, full uh, 4K HD. I believe the maximum is 30 frames per second. Uh, if you want to save storage space, I recommend that you use just the regular 720p. If you're just doing basic images, you're not outside doing amazing video of landscapes, use 720p. If you're needing to do detail-oriented videos, you're out on vacation or whatever, Use the 1080i or 1080p setting, and you'll do just fine. So getting back to normal photo mode, if you just want to take a picture, you would just press there on that circle. It's already taken a uh, example picture. As you can see, it is very quick and responsive. It took the picture instantly. My remote control application finally caught up 
what with what's going on. It, it's an amazing little tool, but it is a little slow. Going back to the video mode here. You can take your videos basically like any other phone. There's a pause button down here if you want to hold on. You could take still images from within the video. So even when you're recording video, you go back to recording. And if you want to take a still image, you can do that so you don't miss any still shots that you happen to want. You're done with the video, of course. You hit the stop. One of the cooler effects on this is the live focus mode, which I switched over to now, or switching to now. That mode allows you to focus on a certain object. Kind of hard to show here, but you can focus on a certain object and blur out the object in the back. You can change your modes to even turn the image black and white around the corners. As you can see, the television's color, but the wall is pretty much black and white. There's some blur effects. But the main mode right there, the bottom one, will focus in on an object and uh, allow you to have that object as the center point and the background image is blurred. So guys, that's pretty much all I could do with the camera review. But uh, the one thing I really love about the camera on that phone is the three modes. The wide focus, regular, and then the wide angle. It's just absolutely amazing on that phone because you can take panoramic shots without even having to enter a panoramic mode. So a few thoughts on this phone versus the new uh, Note 10 that's come out. Uh, Samsung just recently released the Note 10 and the Note 10 Pro and those are amazing phones. The Note 10 Pro is a, a whopping 6.8 inches. Uh, amazing battery life. I think it's a 4400 mAh battery on that phone so you can play all day. It has a new feature in the video recording where you can literally change the background to black and white and have the subject in color. So they've made some enhancements to the camera, but other than some of the software enhancements to the camera on that phone, the camera is pretty much the same as this Galaxy S10 Plus. Uh, the phone is running a Snapdragon 855 Plus. So it's an overclocked Snapdragon 855, but it's basically the same uh, processor as this phone, but they overclocked it a little bit or made some other tweaks to it. but. Uh, I would not consider it a major upgrade unless you're the kind of person that loves to use the S Pen. I've owned three notes before, three different models, and uh, basically I played with the pen the first two or three weeks and then got tired of it and stopped using it. So if you're thinking of upgrading from the S10 Plus to the Note, unless you're going to use it for the productivity tools, I would say don't upgrade. If you're looking for a, a monster screen and you're going to play with that S Pen, then it might be worth it. The smaller Note is 6.4 inches. It does not have expandable storage. The new Note does. But I'm saying this S10 can do pretty much everything that Note can, except a few video camera tweaks, uh, a couple other enhancements. As I said before, six months in, I've had this phone. I've absolutely had no issues with it at all. It has the enough memory, enough speed, and I would say that Samsung finally has made the perfect Android phone. Now, a lot of people watching this are Apple users. Sorry, haha. I think in every possible sense, the camera on this phone blows the iPhone 10 S Max away. The fact that you could customize and tweak things in this phone and you're pretty much locked down on the Apple experience, I will stick with the Android experience forever. Uh, there is another iPhone coming out. I believe it's the iPhone 11, couple months, and they've got a new iOS coming out. I think the new iPhone does have three cameras. 
So we're yet to see what that phone is capable of. But uh, in my opinion, you can't go better than Samsung. Now this is kind of a little added bonus feature to this video. This is how far we've come in the last few years. I still have. This is the Galaxy Note Edge. This is the first attempt at Samsung to build an Edge phone. I'm going to boot the phone up right now. This is the boot screen. This phone I got at the end of the year 2014. So this phone is already uh, six generations, five generations behind the Note 10 that's out right now. Uh, it's loading up. This was on the Sprint network. So you can see how much things have changed over the course of six years. What they've done is pretty much gotten away with this 16 by 9 aspect ratio and go into this 21 by 9. This phone right now is coming up in a battery saver mode. I'm going to log right into it just to show this one feature that Samsung pretty much introduced in this phone. you have this little edge screen on the corner. So this, at the time I had this phone, I considered that absolutely amazing to have that edge screen. Now it's pretty much standard in all the phones. Uh, this phone was kind of an oddball that Samsung sold back in 2014, only sold like less than a million units. It is pretty much a Note 4. So this is pretty much what the Note 4 had, the standard S Pen. We've come a long way. It still has an amazing display. Put the S Pen back in. The biggest change in the last several years is this phone here had the plasticky back. You could take the battery cover off. I kind of missed that if you needed to reset the phone. But this one pretty much had the older design to it where you could take the battery off. Kind of like a fake plastic leathery background. So again, 2014, 2019. It's amazing what we've accomplished. That's pretty much the end of my review. Uh, I highly recommend for the highest performance and quality. And if you're very much into the performance of a camera, the Galaxy S10 uh, Plus is the way to go. And I will probably not upgrade to the Note 10. But you know me. I like gadgets. We'll see what comes down the road. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe to our video, and click the little bell for reminders every time we upload one. And thank you for watching, guys.